कृपा वार्ता कार्यक्रम मन को स्वागत नीति ध्यान समो भयमो फिया कागा भूमि मारपुनंदिनेनु नदी समुद्र मुलो पर्वतम लो मुनिगिनेनु जलमुलो घोषिंच चो नुरुगु कट्टिनेनु आ पोंगुनकु పర్వతములు కదిలినను మనము భయపడకుందము ఈవెన్ ఇఫ్ ద అర్త్ వర్ టు బి మోడ్ ఈవెన్ ఇఫ్ ద మౌంటైన్స్ వర్ టు బి డ్రౌండ్ submerged in oceans we will not fear because the lord is the very present help the lord is our very present help psalm 46 kirtanala grandhamo నలభై ఆరవ అధ్యాయము పర్వతాలు కూలిన సాగరాలు పోర్లిన పర్వతాలు కూలిన సాగరాలు పోర్లిన నీ కృప నీకు బహుదూరమైన నన్ను 
ಚೇರ ದೇಸಿ ನೀದು ಮುಖ ಕಾಂತಿಯೇ ನನ್ನು ಆದರಿಂಚುನುಲೇ ನೀದು ಮುಖ ಕಾಂತಿಯೇ ನನ್ನು ಆದರಿಂಚುನುಲೇ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಮೈನದಿ ನೀವು ನಾಯಡ ಚೋಪಿನ ಕೃಪಾ ಅನುಕ್ಷಣ ಕನು ಪಾಪವಲೇ ಕಾಚಿನ ಕೃಪಾ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ತನ ಬೆಡ್ಡಲನು ಮರಚಿನ ನೇನು ಮರುವಾಲೇನಂಟಿವಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ತನ ಬೆಡ್ಡಲನು ಮರಚಿನ ನೇನು ಮರುವಾಲೇನಂಟಿವಿ ನೀದು ಮುಖ ಕಾಂತಿಯೇ ನನ್ನು ಆದರಿಂಚುನುಲೇ ನೀದು ಮುಖ ಕಾಂತಿಯೇ ನನ್ನು ಆದರಿಂಚುನುಲೇ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಮೈನದಿ ನೀವು ನಾಯಡ ಚೂಪಿನ ಕೃಪಾ ಅನುಕ್ಷಣ ಕನು ಪಾಪವಲೇ ಕಾಚಿನ ಕೃಪಾ ಭಯಮೋ ಪಿಯ ಕಾಗ ಭೂಮಿ ಮಾರ್ಪು ನಂದಿ ನೆನು ನಡಿ ಸಮುದ್ರಮಲೋ ಪರ್ವತಮಲು ಮುಲಿಗಿನನು ಆ ಪೊಂಗುನಕ್ಕು ಜಲಮಲು ಘೋಷಿಂಚು ನೊರುಗು ಕಟ್ಟಿನನು ಆ ಪೊಂಗುಲೋ ಪರ್ವತಮಲು ಕದಲಿನನು ಮನಮೊ ಭಯಪಡಕುಂದುಮೋ ಎಲೆಯನಗಾ ದೇವುಡು ಮನಕು ಆಶ್ರಯಮನು ದುರ್ಗಮನು ನಯುನ್ನಾಡು ಆಪತ್ಕಾಲಮಲೋ ಆಯನ ನಮ್ಮಕುನದಗಿನ ಗೊಪ್ಪ ಸಹಾಯಕುಡು ದ ಲಾಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಅವ ರೆಫ್ಯೂಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ಟ್ರಸ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಡೇ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪಿಯ ಭಯ ಪಡದೆ ನೀ ಮನಮೇ ನಾನು ನಿಡಮಿರ ಕಾ ಭಯಮೇ ಭಯ ಪಡದೆ ನೀ ಮನಮೇ ನಾನು ನಿಡಮಿರ ಕಾ ಭಯಮೇ ಅದ್ಭುತಂಗಳ್ ನಾನ್ ಸೇದಿಡುವೇನ್ ಅತಿ ಸಯಮಾಯು ನೈ ನಡತಿಡುವೇನ್ ಅದ್ಭುತಂಗಳ್ ನಾನ್ ಸೇದಿಡುವೇನ್ ಅತಿ ಸಯಮಾಯು ನೈ ನಡತಿಡುವೇನ್ ನಾನು ನೈ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಬೆಳಗುವುದಿಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ನೈ ಎಂದ್ರೂ ಕೈ ಬಿಡುವುದಿಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ನೈ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಬೆಳಗುವುದಿಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ನೈ ಎಂದ್ರೂ ಕೈ ಬಿಡುವುದಿಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ನೈ ಕಾಣ್ಗಿಂದ್ರ ದೇವನ್ ಕಣ್ಮಣಿ ಪೋಲು ನೈ ಕಾಪೇ ನಾನು ನೈ ಕಾಣ್ಗಿಂದ್ರ ದೇವನ್ ಕಣ್ಮಣಿ ಪೋಲು ನೈ ಕಾಪೇ ಭಯ ಪಡದೆ ನೀ ಮನಮೇ ನಾನ್ ಕಾತಿಡುವೇ ನುನ್ನೈ ದಿನಮೇ ಅದ್ಭುತಂಗಳ್ ನಾನ್ ಸೇದಿಡುವೇನ್ ಅತಿಸಯಮಾಯುನ್ನೈ ನಡತಿಡುವೆ ನಾನು ನೈ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಬೆಳಗುವುದಿಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ನೈ ಎಂದ್ರೂ ಕೈ ಬಿಡುವುದಿಲ್ಲ 
திகாயதே கலங்காதே மனமே நான் உன்னிடம் இருக்கா பயமே திகாயதே கலங்காதே மனமே நான் உன்னிடம் இருக்கா பயமே அத்புதங்கள் நான் செய்திடுவேன் அதிசயமாய் உன்னை நடத்திடுவேன் நான் உன்னை விட்டு விலகுவதில்லை நான் உன்னை என்றும் கைவிடுவதில்லை நான் உன்னை காண்கின்ற தேவன் கண்மணி போல் உன்னை காப்பேன் நான் உன்னை காண்கின்ற தேவன் கண்மணி போல் உன்னை காப்பேன் நான் உன்னை விட்டு விலகுவதில்லை நான் உன்னை என்றும் கைவிடுவதில்லை நெவா வில் ஐ லீவ் யூ நெவா வில் ஐ ஹோ செக் யூ வை ஷுட் யூ ஃபியர் நெவா வில் ஐ லீவ் யூ நெவா வில் ஐ ஹார்ட் செக் யூ As I have been with Moshe, I will be with you. What a wonderful God we have. The same promise that is given to Moshe is given to Joshua again. The servant of the Lord, the chosen vessel of God Apostle, Paul, is reminding us the promise in the book of Hebrews. What a wonderful coincidence what a wonderful consistency all through the 66 books of bible we see the truth there is no trace of ambiguity contradiction question of mistrust question of doubt in all the 66 books of the bible the word of the lord is unchanging i am the alpha i am the omega i am the first i am the last that is why ages have gone millennia have gone from the time of abraham to the time of jesus christ there are 52 generations 52 generations have passed but the promise given to abraham to be fulfilled who has patience we do not have patience because because of that particular because of that very reason our lifetime has been cut tail to 120 years during the times of noah and these days we do not have even assurance that we will live for the average life span of 70 or 80 years when it comes to the times of noah the lord says noah not more than 120 years again during the times of moshe moshe puts a limit through moshe the prophet god puts a limit the life span of man is 70 years if by reason of strength 80 years yet the glory of all these 70 years or 80 years is weariness toiling suffering in all the toiling in all the weariness in all the meaninglessness if there were to be any meaningfulness in the life of man that is only found in the person called Jesus by knowing Jesus Christ man regains the paradise that was lost the honor that was lost the glory that was lost the innocence child like nature that was lost the godly nature that was lost in the beginning when adam was created adam was created in the image of god in the form of god in the likeness of god adam is called the son of god yet adam betrayed god adam deceived god god was grieved god was wounded later during the times of david 
David was after God's own heart David is after my own heart my servant David is after my own heart he knows my heart how David knew the heart of God because David used to have friendship with God David used to rejoice to be with God by feeding his little sheep little flock David used to spend more time in communicating with God in talking to God in praising God in singing hymns to God that is why such a beautiful psalm has come out from the mind of David have we found any hymn greater than the psalm 23 so far through many tribulations through many life threatening situations through many sorrows david has gone through that is the very reason why david could write so many hymns so many psalms that come lively in each one of our lives are there less number of sorrows to us are there less number of troubles to us are there less number of problems to us these days whatever may be your agony whatever may be your loneliness whatever may be your fear when you come to bible the book of life especially the book of psalms when you read the psalms you will receive comfort you will receive consolation moreover you will be filled with the spirit of thankfulness you will be filled with the spirit of gratitude and without your knowledge praises will automatically come forth proceed from your mouth and you will sing praises to god you will sing songs of thanks to god such is the beauty of the book of psalms most of which was compiled by the servant of the lord david there were 150 psalms in the book of psalms all the most of the psalms were written by david we can learn to pray we can learn to give thanks we can learn to praise god we can learn to go close to the creator god when we read the psalms moreover when we read the psalms whatever may be the brokenness of our heart whatever may be our fear whatever may be our loss whatever may be our uncertainty insecurity when we read the psalms god will speak to us right to our soul right to our heart and heals our brokenness through his word what a comforting word today what is the big problem many men and women are facing loneliness no one has time for no one wife has no time for husband husband has no time for man children has wife has no time for husband children have no time for parents parents have no time for children and many of the youngsters are experiencing loneliness frustration fear being unwanted being rejected you are above 18 you have reached maturity you are 18 years of age you are 21 years of age so you should be away from us either the parents will cast the children out or they themselves will be going out from their parents because of the ill treatment because of the lack of love don't we see in so many families because families are becoming more and more materialistic these days because of the absence of the presence of god in homes and we see so many youngsters on streets being unloved being rejected as a consequence what the youngsters will do in their tender age in their youth they will be attracted to wrong friendships they will be walking in wrong ways to derive comfort to derive love to derive belongingness to earn livelihood and we see many youngsters in brokenness we see many youngsters in hopelessness getting disgusted with life and many even committing suicide many even ending up in prisons many even ending up in rehabilitation centers charity begins at home love begins at home how can there be love in home if there is no knowledge of god how can there be affection if jesus christ were not to be present in homes 
a family that prays together stays together a family that prays to together do not seek of their own the individuals in the family do not seek their own comfort rather they will seek the good of others in the family this is what is called love and the family stays united how many families are getting dissociated by divorce for every simple reason divorce my husband has shouted on me my husband has hit me i need divorce don't we see in courts so many court cases neither the wife nor the husband will ever turn to the court but divorce will be issued through mediators how good it will be if there were to be a mediator between me and god job is seeking mediator for what for consolation for reconciliation for healing for comfort not for divorce job has every legitimate reason to seek divorce from his wife still why do you utter the name of god still why do you cast your faith on god still why do you believe in god still why do you trust in god you have been experiencing so much grief so much losses so much sickness so much humiliation your friends themselves are accusing you that you are a wrong doer your friends themselves are pointing out that you did some wrong you did something that was against god that is the very reason why you are experiencing these losses your friends themselves are testifying against you what for you are still lingering to god what for you still have your faith on god curse the name of god and put an end to yourself commit suicide die what is this spirit except other than the spirit of satan only satan will cause discouragement satan is the author of author of discouragement why do we see so many youngsters being dis- disparate discouraged running to commit suicide how will i commit suicide what way is the simplest what way is the best what way is the easier this is not the will of god for you god want you to flourish god want you to be a tree planted beside the waters what does a tree that is planted beside the streams of water lack will it fear will it fear drought will it fear lack of rain no the living waters the streams of water will provide all the nourishment that it that it needed so when you know jesus christ when you abide in jesus christ you will be the vine that is connected to the the branch that is connected to the vine and you will bear much fruit he that is in me and i that in him will be more fruitful he will not have any reason to worry because he is abiding in me and i am abiding in in him he will bear much fruit i will ordain such people to go forth and bear much fruit because their fears are relieved because they are stabilized because they are comforted because they are made to stand on themselves because they are made to lean on jesus christ because they are made to build their house on the rock they will be comforters they will be providing strength they will be providing refuge to those that are in fear to those that are running to put an end to their lives job has every legitimate reason to get separated from his wife to seek some kind of mediator to break the relationship but on the contrary job is not considering the bad he is receiving from his own wife bad he is receiving from his own friends rather the focus of job the attention of job the sight of job the vision of job the hope of job is only on god and job still prays how good it will be how good it will be if there were to be some mediator between me and god job is seeking for such a mediator in due time during the end of the ages such mediator has been sent into the world jesus christ is the mediator between man and god jesus christ has come to this world to reconcile man to god jesus christ has come to this world to turn the heart of children to the father jesus christ has come to this world to seek the lost sheep how many youngsters are like lost sheep 
wherever they go they will receive only rejection and uh, this is more so in times in this times of health emergency in this times of financial crisis in this times of name any crisis that is present today in this tough times most of the youngsters are losing their faith in god and turning away from god is this not this tough time that you should cling on to jesus christ i am jobless for many months i have no penny i have no livelihood so where is god god is no the existence of god is not true in my life this should not be your attitude job has every legitimate reason to accuse god to disbelieve in god to have doubt in the existence of god to have mistrust on god yet job has never ever given place to mistrust job has never lost his patience that is why after millennia job is regarded job is appreciated praised acclaimed honored for what for his faith will anyone remember you after 100 years the preacher being author of several books in one of the recent uh, book proposals the preacher writes the lifetime of the book will be 100 years then his research supervisor corrects the number 100 to 10 will any of the books will have lifetime of 100 years a century these days still the preacher is living in the times of the bible will any of the books have lifetime of 100 years a century old no because the data accumulation is so far so huge and the recent innovation is becoming out of date within no time and the data that could be generated in one year in almost all of the labs that are involved in microbiology are being generated in a week days time within a single laboratory is that too much data is being generated that much knowledge is being generated there has been information explosion a seven orders of magnitude rise in the data sequencing within a short span of 2 into 7 14 years from 1996 to 2010 within a short span of 14 years there has been a seven orders of magnitude increase in data sequencing such is the times we are living in can any book have lifetime of 100 years the supervisor with five decades of experience in research corrects the lifetime of the proposed book will not be 100 years maximum 10 years that too doubtful <coughs> such are the times we are living in yet the book of job had lifespan of millennia can we ever believe can we ever imagine how do we know in the book of james we see after many centuries after many millennia the book of the author of the book of james in the new testament is referring to a person called job and the lord in appreciating praising him for his patience will anyone remember you after one year, one century after your passing away what for you should be remembered you have so much authority you have so much power you have so much knowledge you have accumulated so much wisdom you have 1600 publications yet you are striking off the names of those that were selected for job position what for you should be remembered you are a burden to the earth professing that they are wise they have become fools what will you carry is there any good thing that you have to carry to eternity eternity has both ends 
eternal life and eternal condemnation their deeds will go with them vaari kriyalu vaari vente vellano this is only a representative example the professor uh, heading many panels of funding many panels of committees of highest academic stature says we cannot give faculty position to all the qualified people what qualification you require except the need the person is in hunger the person is in homelessness he has some kind of qualification give him what is worth of it with whatever measure you measure it will also be measured to you in the same measure will in even of you be remembered after a century of your passing away with all your innovation nobel laureates are auctioning their nobel prizes where is nobility after reaching the pinnacle accomplished men and women are saying at the pinnacle there is vanity 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 all is vanity the preacher solomon the wisest of the kings deserving prize more worthy than any kind of nobel prize of the present day rights vanity 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 vyardhamo sarvam no ilalo vyardhamo sarvam no telupu mo na yo ento telupu mo ento telupu mo ento virigi nalige unnano nenu virigi nalige unnano na guri nive na prabhuva na guri nive na prabhuva telupu mo ental podano virigi nalige unnano nenu virigi nalige unnano yarthamo sarvamo no ilalo yarthamo sarvamo no telupu mo na yo ento telupu mo ental podano telupu mo ental podano viriginalige unnano nenu viriginalige unnano lokamanta nadani enchi bandhu metrule priyulanu kontini antayo vyadhamega antayo vyadhamega vyadhamo sarvamuno ilalo vyadhamo sarvamuno vanity all is vanity solmo deserved more than any kind of nobel prize that is existing in the present days because solmon write extensively on all kinds of plant species on all kinds of animals geologist botanist solmon for sure deserves nobel prize prize all through the 40 years of solmon there has been never a war solmon deserved the highest of the honors of the present day 
whether it be Nobel Peace Prize, whether it be Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize in Scientific Innovation, his name will be top in the list. He will be the most wanted person, whether in biology or geology or as a promoter of peace. What is the use? What is the use? The end of a thing is better than the beginning. Solomon's starting was grand. Solomon's starting was great. For 40 years Solomon reigned over Israel. At the end of the day what has happened? His heart has turned away from God. Solomon, you are going away from me. Solomon, the very many concubines you have put, the very many foreign women you have put, have distracted your heart, you have forgotten the life of your father, you have forgotten your beginnings, you have forgotten your origin to whom you have been born. What is your birth? Who is the woman that has begotten you? You have forgotten. So, the kingdom will be split into two. But for the servant, for the sake of my servant, David, I will not take the kingdom from your hand. I will take the kingdom from your son's hand. From Rahabam's hand, I will take away the kingdom. He will have only one tribe. Ten tribes will be given to your servant, Yoruba. Whatever we do today, the consequences, our children will see. David, you committed adultery with Beersheba secretly. Your son, Absalom, will do the same sin and many a fold. Not secretly, in the open sky, he will put you to shame. In Jerusalem, he will sleep with all your concubines. If you are to wanting, if you are to want any good thing, any beautiful woman, have I withhold you? Any good thing? Don't you have many wives? Don't you have many concubines? Can you not marry many more? Why have you taken away the only little lamb that your neighbor has? Is this justice? What is your beginning? Where have you been? When you were belittled by your own siblings, when your father himself has sent you to care for the sheep, I have lifted you from dung hill. What have you done? You have brought much reproach to me before my enemies. Don't you have any other woman except the wife of Uriah? David, for the sin you have committed, you deserve death. God himself has made atonement. What is the atonement God has made? He offered himself as a ransom for the sins of David. Isaiah chapter 53. The prophet David himself write, writes Psalm 22. Without Psalm 22, there is no Psalm 23. For us to inherit eternal life, there must be crucifixion of Christ for the atonement of us, for the atonement of our sins. Without Psalm 22, there is no Psalm 23. Without crucifixion of Jesus Christ, there is no heavenly inheritance for man. There is no forgiveness of sins to man. They cast lots for my clothes. How clearly David is seeing so clearly 
the suffering of Christ on the cross. What a wonderful vision! Today we have all kinds of videos. Today we have all kinds of telephones, mobile phones, TVs, all kinds of display materials. The nation China is blessed with so much natural resources, especially rare earth metals, lanthanides, actinides that are extensively used, widely used for display materials, whether it be. mobile phones whether it be tv display or any other kind of display materials these rare earth metals are very essential in those days there have never been any kind of displays during the times of david the only kind of display is the highest level of communication and god used to communicate to his people through dreams and david was granted visions David is so clearly writing the sufferings of Messiah Jesus Christ on the cross in Psalm 22. Similar writings were compiled by Prophet Ashia 500 years, five centuries before the advent of Jesus Christ into the courts of human history. Much before Prophet Ashia, David writes. After many generations of David we see prophet Isaiah coming to Hizkia and warning Hizkia Hizkia your earthly journey is completed pack up wind up you have to make a move God is going to gather you to your ancestors so set your accounts ready your earthly journey is filled completed enough when god himself were to have a better position for you when god himself want to take you upon his bosom and carry you to eternity and have you in immanuel garden immanuel mountains why at all you should mount why at all why at all you should turn to the wall and weep cry lord remember me remember the good i did in your sight has god forgotten you were good has for has god forgotten you were good deeds god will never forget the good that you have done lord remember me remember the good i did as if god has forgotten the good hizkia has done hizkia has done much good always written in the book of the lord that is the very reason why god has said hizkia enough your pilgrimage on this planet earth is accomplished i want to take you to your ancestors i want to gather you with your ancestors i want to take you into rest enough of this earthly journey what for hech kya plead for life is the journey on this planet earth has anything better than being with god Lord remember the good i did in your sight with weeping with tears hichkia utters this words lord remember me the good i did in your sight and tears flows from the eyes of hichkia the lord is merciful the lord is compassionate if his servant prays with tears God will not withhold anything that he wanted whether it is good for him or bad for him because my child is praying I will give this is what we do with our kids knowing fully well chocolates are harmful knowing fully well snacks are harmful knowing fully well ice creams are so much contaminated with so many bacteria and viral viral infections that will cause cold that will cause cough and many other things because our child wants because the child do not know because the child weeps if we do not buy for him we will buy and give knowing fully well it is harmful to him knowing fully well the chocolates the biscuits the ice cream most of them are having notorious effects do today we do not know what is carcinogenic and what is not carcinogenic the water we drink the air we breathe the food we eat through any way such dreadful diseases may enter our body 
knowing fully well a particular thing is not good for our children he, because he cries we do not want to make our child weeping we will give him if being yourself evil if you know how to do good to your children how much more your heavenly father knows to do good to you if you yourself being evil know to show compassion to your own children how much more your heavenly father knows to do good to you will any one of you give your child snake if he asks for a fish will any one of you give your child stone when he asks for bread then how much more your heavenly father knows to do good to you give in due time the things that will be good to you will any one of you give to your child snake if he wants fish will any one of you give stone to your child when he asks for bread will when any one of you give scorpion to your child when he ask for egg then why are you doing this to the least of these brothers when you see an orphan when you see a widow when you see a weak person when you see a sick person why do you show rejection to him why do you show empty hands to him why will you knock him out why will you do close the door before him why will you withhold his wages he is not working so i with have i have withheld the wages probably your life itself is owed to the person whom you are accusing that he is not working in your fields you owed me in what way we owed to you by withholding the offerings that are due to me by withholding the tithes that are oh you owed to me by withholding the gold the silver the precious things that i have granted you you owe me your life dhan dharalon dhan dhanya mulaniya ga karuninchi rakshinchi ka paadaga paralokanadundu nikeya ga mariye sukoraki avenu deetwa निधनमो निघनमो प्रभु ये सुदे नीद समाग मुनिया विनुदीवागिंच सकलंबु समृद्धिगा तोलगिंच पलुबाध भरतंभुलो कलिगिंच सकलंबु समृद्धिगा तलगिंच पलुबाद भरतंबुलो चलुअंग प्रभु कीय चिंतवा निधनमो निधनमो प्रभु ये सुदे नीद समाग मुनिया विनुदीवा यू रॉब्ड मी यू ओड मी वॉट ऑल यू हैव इज गिवन बै मी देन वै आर यू हेस्टन टू गिव मै शेर then why are you hesitant to honor me to glorify me with all the things that you have received from me are you not receiving sunlight are you not receiving fruitful seasons are you not receiving rain have you not received the very breath from me have you not received the good health from me at the end of the year what are you giving me you owed me where are the tithes where are the offerings where are the first fruits where is the harvest no 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 i am not obliged to offer you the tithes i am not obliged to bring the harvest i am not obliged to give you the offerings i am a modern day christian i am no more under the law the law has been nailed to the cross if you are not obliged to the law how god is obliged to you to offer his only begotten son jesus christ on the cross for your sins for blessing god is obliged to you through his old covenant when it comes to giving honor glory offering tithes to god you are not obliged to god through the old testament is this the just balance you are holding 
if you are so poor if you are no, not having sufficient livelihood to feed your children to feed your wife to feed your family god is not demanding you you have the surplus you have the millions you have the billions under the cot in the cupboard under the floor in the pot everywhere you have this money that money white money green money black money you have all kinds of jewelry having so much abundance having so much riches you say that you are not obliged to give tithes to the god god is not asking from your poverty you have very very limited resources you have to feed your children you have to feed your wife god never ever demanded a penny from you god himself says not giving what is due to your father what is due to your mother what is due to your brothers if you offer that is no offering to me can you give offering and say to the brother that is in need qurban i have sacrificed to god so i have nothing to you i will show you empty hands can i say that to my child can i say to my wife can i say to my brother that i have offered offering in the church so i will give nothing to them is this the sacrifice acceptable to god I have given tithe so I will give you no penny can the preacher say to his child can the preacher say to his wife can the preacher say to his mother brother god never demands you what is you legally to your wife to your spouse to your children god has established the institute of family in the garden of eden Give what is due to your mother. Give what is due to your father. Give what is due to your children. Give what is due to your wife. Not giving to them if you offer and say korban to them. I have sacrificed to God, so I have nothing to you. That is regarded as hypocrisy in the sight of God. In the same way, having been blessed with so much resources, so much wealth, and saying that I am not obliged to God by the Old Testament, and I am not obliged to give tithes. that is no way acceptable to god you have robbed me you are thieves in what way i we have robbed you how your land is yielding the crop how your fields are giving you the fertility of the soil how are you enjoying the good health when many are taking chemotherapy when poisonous chemicals are injected into their veins for suppressing the multiplication of the cells uncontrolled multiplications of the of the cells with no control of growth of cells into the veins poisonous chemicals are being injected chemotherapy is given radiotherapy is given they are suffering through fever they are suffering through vomitings don't you see the suffering all around when you enjoy so much good health when you enjoy so much honor when you enjoy so much fruitfulness are you not obliged to be thankful to god god holds the just balance do not be deceived god will not be mocked the foolishness of god is greater than the wisdom of the wise God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the strong. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. God has chosen the lowly things of the world to put to shame. Those are those that are regarded as high in this world. Fear bhayamo bhayame la janulara priya raksha kunichera vesha bha shalumani vesha bha shalumani bhayame la janulara priya raksha kunichera we need not fear to approach 
the throne of grace of god because of what christ has done on the cross in the old testament times to approach god is a terrible thing is a fearful thing who can ever approach god samipim parane tejasunandu vasinchu amarudave god is dwelling in the light which can never be approached by man yet through what christ has done on the cross we all were given the privilege more than the celestial beings who are invited to the, to the throne of grace through the name jesus christ through the torn body of jesus christ we have access to the throne of the lord most high with all our petitions with all our requests we can go to god and get grace for all our needs my grace is sufficient for thee in your weakness my strength is made perfect na krupa neeku chaluno nee balahinate yandu na balamu paripurna magucchunati కొరిందీలకు రాసిన రెండవ పత్రిక పన్నెండవ అధ్యాయము తొమ్మిదవ వచ్చను సెకండ్ కొరిందియన్స్ చాప్టర్ ట్వెల్వ్ వర్స్ నైన్ మై గ్రేస్ ఇస్ సఫిషియంట్ ఫర్ ది ఇన్ యూ వీక్నెస్ మై స్ట్రెంత్ ఇస్ మేడ్ పర్ఫెక్ట్ ఇన్ యూ వీక్నెస్ మై స్ట్రెంత్ ఇస్ మేడ్ పర్ఫెక్ట్ వాగ్దానంబులన్నయో నావే ప్రతి అధ్యాయము వచనమో అన్ని దైవ ప్రేమ దీవెనలే బైబిల్లోని వాగ్దనంబులన్నీ నావే వాగ్దనంబులన్నీ నావే ప్రాతి అధ్యాయము వచనమో అన్ని దైవ ప్రేమ దీవెనలే బైబిల్లోని వాగ్దనంబులన్నీ నావే ఆల్ ద ప్రామిసెస్ ఇన్ ద బైబుల్ ఆర్ ఫైన్ do you have such assurance if jesus christ were to be yours if you are of jesus christ if you abide in jesus and if jesus remains in you all the promises of bible are yours ask it will be given unto you knock it will be opened search you will find those that find jesus will find fulfillment those that receive jesus christ have life and life in abundance ask any person that has received jesus into his life as his personal savior if he fears death obviously the answer is straight forward no because the victory that has overcome the world is our faith in christ if you have faith in christ you are victorious if you have faith in christ you are successful god will turn all your failures into success i have been a failure in my career i have been a failure in my family i am deceived by my wife i am betrayed my by, by my husband my children have betrayed me my children have ill treated me i am deceived by all all your losses all your pains all your grief all your sorrows will be relieved when you come to cross what can be more injustice than crucifixion of christ what can be so sorrowful tale than the selling of jesus christ by judas for 30 silver pieces slave price judas could have sold jesus christ for 30 gold pieces what a pity what a sorrow seeing that jesus christ is the son of god knowing that jesus is the messiah judas has preferred 30 silver pieces over life why satan has entered into judas if satan can enter into such a close disciple to jesus christ what is my fate what is your fate peter satan has chosen to save you satan has chosen to rob your faith i have pleaded my father that your faith remains intact kefa simon you will be called kefa on this rock i will build my church there has never been fear all fear relieved when christ was betrayed by when christ was sold when christ was delivered to 
the hands of religious leaders when Christ was delivered to the high priest, when Christ was delivered to the soldiers.